I'm back in Conrad at Sunset Dental. I'm visiting with Dr. Van Dyke. Uh, doctor, we're going to talk about periodontal disease, which yeah. is not uh, exactly a fun subject, no. but it's an important one. Kind of one of those dirty words you don't yeah. want to hear. <laughs> Why don't you first describe what it actually is? Well, periodontal disease has to do with bacteria in your mouth and bacteria in your mouth that are out of control, basically. Mm. And that bacteria puts off a toxin. And so if you're not brushing your teeth enough, if you're not flossing, you could be brushing and not flossing and still have periodontal disease. Mm -hmm. And you've got to get that out of there or those toxins over time start to irritate the tissue of the gums. And if it's left there long enough, it starts to irritate the bone and you start losing the bone around the tooth. Okay, so we need to be regularly cleaning our teeth because essentially we always have some bacteria in our mouth. Oh right? yeah. For sure. I mean, you can't get rid of all the bacteria in your mouth, nor do you want to. Some of it's good bacteria. Okay. But when it's left in there in the form of, people have heard the word plaque or calculus, and that's the stuff that if it's left in there and not brushed out or flossed out, it's going to eventually start that process. And it doesn't take very long. Within a week, mm -hmm. you'll have the first phase of it, which is called gingivitis. All right, so that might be the trigger that I first notice that I've got a problem. Yeah. Um, are there certain foods or certain things that cause more bacteria than others, or is it? Uh, you know, well, carbohydrates are probably the worst as far as buildup of plaque in the mouth okay. that's not being brushed off. Right. They will form more plaque in the mouth than anything, you know, breads, things of that nature, mm -hmm. sugary things, you know. But if I have a regular regimen of brushing my teeth and flossing, mm -hmm. uh, typically I wouldn't have a problem, right? No. No, you really shouldn't. If you do, you may have an, another autoimmune thing going on, mm -hmm. which, you know, as you know, in our office, we look at the whole body, too, here right. and the connection with the mouth. Right. And so we're looking for those things, too, if it doesn't seem to add up. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll talk about the, more of this uh, on our next segment of Medical Montana. I'm visiting with Dr. Van Dyke here at Sunset Dental, and we're talking about periodontal disease. Um, we defined it last time, but uh, let's talk about symptoms. How would I even have a clue that I had periodontal disease? Well, you know, one of the first things is your mouth might be literally sore. Um, or if you do do flossing, but you don't floss real often, you may notice a lot of bleeding mm -hmm. in the mouth. That's a sign of inflamed gums. Oh. And, you know, it, it may not have progressed to full-blown periodontal disease where you've lost bone, but you're working into it. So that blood is significant. Um, you might have bad breath. Your significant other might tell you, hey. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and to be honest, there is a very distinct smell to periodontal disease. And I don't know if the general public knows that, but I, as a dentist, it's, it's very distinct. I was going to say, I mean, we get bad breath if we eat right. too much garlic, but this right. is something different. This is a whole different smell. I can't describe it. I, I can only just tell you that it's very distinct. Okay. And I assume the sooner we discover this disease, the better off we're going to be. So oh, yeah. uh, if, I, if I even think that I might be touching this, I need to come and see you Right. And then what are you going to do to discover what it is? Well, and you know, that's the thing. If you're having regular exams, your dentist should be on top of it. So a lot of people with periodontal disease, they're not seeing their dentist real often, most often. Okay. So when you come in, that's what we're going to do. We're going to, one of the first things we're going to do in an exam, in our initial exam, is find out, is there any pocketing in your mouth or not? Okay. So that's a big deal, and, and every dentist should be doing that. In today's world, periodontal disease should be one of the first things a dentist is looking for. So is it common? You know, statistically, 80%, they say 80% of the adult population has a periodontal spot or place somewhere in their mouth, even if it's just one. In other words, it's bleeding and it probes deep, and we'll mm -hmm. talk about probing later. Okay, sounds good. Getting some help here from Dr. Van Dyke. You're watching Medical Montana. I'm back in the chair at Sunset Dental visiting with Dr. Van Dyke, and I'm about to experience a checkup for periodontal disease. Right. So what do we do? Okay. Well, I'll explain it on here first, and okay. then we'll actually look in your mouth. So we have, this is not healthy tissue. In other words, it's red and inflamed. inflamed. And mm -hmm. we have nice pink salmony tissue over here. That's what we call it. Very healthy looking. So what we're looking for is this. 
Now, this doesn't always look like this. Sometimes it's sort of something between. And you go in and you probe. This, this probe has measurements of three millimeter increments. Oh. And there's, there's four of them. So this has a 12 millimeter ability once it's down in there. So, so you're you, checking behind the gum. We're checking right between the tooth and right. the gum, right, right there. We're mm -hmm. sliding between that gum and there. Okay. And that, that measurement is extremely um, important because if it's greater than a three, it's a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, it can be that deep. Wow. In other words, you've lost bone. If it's greater than a three, you've either lost bone. If it's a four, you may not have lost bone, but you may have swollen gums that are bleeding. So you may not be into full-blown periodontal disease, huh. but it's starting. Okay. Okay. So, so that space behind there tells you a lot in terms of whether I've lost bone and exactly. how far advanced the disease might be. Exactly. That measurement's extremely important in diagnosing okay. it. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. So you're ready for an exam? Yeah, sure. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we've got Tim in the chair now, and we're going to do a probing of his teeth to check for gingivitis periodontal disease. So let's go right here where you can see this. And you can see those little markings that I was talking about in three millimeter increments. And we're going to just slip between his gum. And now actually in him, it's very hard because he has such healthy gums. So I'm only in there like a millimeter in that spot. Let's see if it's a little more deep back here. Back here, we've got a two. We're just going to go around. That's a two. We go in the front. That would be a two. And that one's about a two. So let's take a look at this more next time, and we'll talk more about the periodontal disease. I'm in the chair here once again with Dr. Van Dyke at Sunset Dental. Been getting a checkup for periodontal disease. So far, good news, I think. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to have Dr. Van Dyke continue. Okay. So I'll just reiterate what we were looking for. We're looking, we, we had said that this had probing numbers on it, and we're looking for three or less. That's healthy. Anything greater than a three tells me there's a problem. So we're going to go between his gum and his tooth and find that out. We really don't want to see this because this is advanced periodontal disease. Okay. Okay. So we'll go back where we were. We were right about in here. And that's a two. And that's a two. And that's a two. And that's a two. Two. So what we've got is a very healthy mouth, at least where I'm probing right now. Now, I said statistically in one of our other shows that 80% of the adult population has at least one periocyte in their mouth. And that could just be a four, which might not mean that you have bone loss, but you may have a swollen gum because it's just in that n initial gingivitis stage. Okay. So if I were to probe all of your teeth, I, statistically, I'd probably find one spot where it might be a four. Well, maybe. And, you know, maybe not. But. So if that spot is not attended to, it, it can advance then over time? Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. And, and then you, you can end up with this, which is what we were looking at, where the bone is lost. That's what this is representing. Right. And you start seeing the root of the tooth. And it can get very painful. And it can actually cause a, what we call perioabscess mm -hmm. if it gets deep enough. And that's pretty much a goner at that point. You know, as many times as I've had my checkups done, they always probe with that tool that you just were. <laughs> right. And I wondered what they were doing. Right. I thought they right. were looking for food under my gums <laughs> or something. I didn't know. Well, and you know, it, it, it needs to be explained, especially if it's your first time, right. because it can be kind of painful, and it depends on the operator. All right. So We'll talk more about this and more than that here on Medical Montana. I'm back with Dr. Van Dyke here at Sunset Dental. Um, I'm glad for the good news. I don't really have a problem, right. at least right now. Right. Um, but assuming that I did, and you discovered it, right. what happens next? Can you help me? Well, oh yes, we can help you. The first thing we do is have a really in-depth conversation about what it is and why you want to treat it. And one of the biggest things I tell people is this is an infection and infection just doesn't go away on its own. 
and so we have to help you to get rid of it mm -hmm. initially. In other words, the cause. And the cause is the calculus. And the calculus is a it's plaque that becomes hard and it's stuck to the roots under the gum line. Wow. And that's what over time starts the bacteria, remember we talked about toxins and whatnot. They're living and carrying on on that, on that calculus, forming more and more calculus and putting out these toxins and you're losing bone as you go. Mm. So we've got to get rid of that. So how are we going to do that? Well, we do what's called root planning or deep scaling. Frankly, the word sounds terrible. Yeah. You know, I, I, I have to admit that. <laughs> you know, I mean, it doesn't sound good. But, you know, it's a serious disease. You mm -hmm. could lose your teeth. And if you lose your teeth, you lose the ability to really eat well. And, mm -hmm. and then your health will suffer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think when people understand what a, a important thing it is, mm -hmm. they're not afraid to do it. So how do we make you comfortable when we do it? We can give you the gas. Right. We've looked at that before. That. Mm -hmm. that helps take away some of the anxiety. Mm -hmm. We numb the area. So unfortunately, we do have to get out the shot. Right. But we've got stuff that makes the shot so much easier these days. I have a new product. Um, this is a new topical anesthetic that I got that I have tried it on myself, and I was amazed mm -hmm. at how profound it was before I give the actual shot. Right. So we get you numb, and then we start to use these instruments. These are called scaling instruments. They are sharp, right? and we're going to go under the gum with these. Okay, well, so. we'll continue this discussion. You're watching Medical Montana. <laughs> Visiting with Dr. Van Dyke again here at Sunset Dental, talking about uh, how to fix periodontal disease, and you were just about to tell me so let's pick it up where okay. we left off. Well, we talked about, we call it root planing or deep, deep scaling. Mm -hmm. And what that means is we have to take an instrument and we have to go under the gums mm -hmm. to get the calculus off the root that the bacteria are living and carrying on on. Okay. So we use a, a sharp instrument, obviously, mm -hmm. to get that to come off. Mm -hmm. And we do have to numb you up. Mm -hmm. It definitely makes it more comfortable. We could use the nitrous too. Anything to help you as a patient be more comfortable. Sure. So this tool itself can remove what's necessary. Oh yeah, this is a sharp little tool and, and you know, well, if this were the tooth, we would take it and put it against the tooth and be scraping like that. I hate to use that word. Right. It's a nasty word, but in the dental office. <laughs> but that calculus but that's what has it is. to come off. It has to come off, so you got to pop it off. Now, we do have another type of instrumentation called called a sonic type remover, a piezo it's called. Mm -hmm. And it, it's more ultrasonic. But it can also be, I, I personally don't like it in my mouth because I have very sensitive teeth. Well, if you're numb, it doesn't matter. So you can maybe not use that in a regular cleaning, mm -hmm. but in a root planing you can. And it, it, it's a little more effective in some ways than these. Okay. It makes it easier. So is there a risk that once you remove what needs to be removed, it'll come back? Oh yeah, oh yeah. If you remove it and then the patient doesn't follow through on the home care, mm -hmm. the preventative stuff, mm -hmm. it's, it's just like cancer. It'll come back. If it's not treated properly, I tell people that, it will come back. You have to arrest the problem. Okay. Now, let's assume that I've let it go too long mm -hmm. and it's a pretty serious condition. Mm -hmm. uh, could it be that you'll need to remove the tooth? Very likely. If, it, if, that, if the bone level drops far enough, you the bone or the tooth becomes very mobile mm -hmm. and and there's no way of putting that bone back it's it's gone okay. so it's very unfortunate but you can definitely lose teeth with periodontal disease so the moral of the story is don't wait get it treated get it fixed right dr van dyke can help you with that right here at sunset dental this is medical montana back at sunset dental with Dr. Van Dyke, we've been talking about periodontal disease and extreme cases of periodontal disease mm -hmm. where we're suffering bone loss. Mm -hmm. What do we do? Well, we do all the things that we've talked about so far, but we do something extra. If I have someone with 50% bone loss or greater, and they're sitting here telling me, I just want to save my teeth, please help me save my teeth. You know, ordinarily it's, it's like some of those teeth, they're probably going to be lost, but I've been amazed with this system, how they can tighten up. So we do offer this, it's called Perio Protect. We use this in, as an adjunct to the other therapy, the root planing. Okay. But what we do is we start with this, instead of starting with the root planing. We uh, have the patient have an impression made, and we send that off to the lab, 
and they make this tray. And mm -hmm. this is squishy, right? Um, but it's firm, and it fits very tightly around these teeth. And what we do is we load this tray with 3% hydrogen peroxide gel. So what that does is it kills the bacteria. The, the tray pushes the gel under the gum line mm -hmm. where the bacteria are living and carrying on. Mm -hmm. And it lowers the bacterial numbers. We have found that it also makes it easier to get the calculus off when we do get the scaling appointment. So we want this about two to three weeks ahead of time. Oh, okay. And then we do the scaling and plane appointment, and mm -hmm. it makes it much easier. Mm -hmm. And then they use this in between their three or four month appointments. They put this in like once a day for a minute or two. It's the only thing out there that will actually help keep the bac bacterial colonies from getting really out of hand in between appointments. Interesting. Great product. Wow. Yeah. It sounds really similar to the product used for whitening teeth. You know, and that's a side effect. It's great you brought that up. There is a side effect of wearing these trays, and it will whiten your teeth, believe it or not. Well, that's so great that's news. one of the things we tell people, you know, hey, as a benefit, you're going to actually whiten your teeth. Even though it's 3%, which is nothing, right. doesn't sound like much for whitening, right. it will whiten the teeth over time. So. There's good hope for your teeth if you see Dr. Van Dyke here at Sunset Dental. You're watching Medical Montana. Back at Sunset Dental, talking with Dr. Van Dyke about prevention and good, healthy teeth. Right. And we've got a friend joining us today we as do. well. We do. This is Bugsy. <laughs> He's our little demonstration model, especially for children. But um, first thing we're going to talk about is brushing. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the most obvious. If you're not brushing well, you're not getting that plaque off your, your teeth and your gums, you're going to get cavities and you're going to get gingivitis and then you may get periodontal disease. So brushing is very simple. Um, but, you know, a lot of people do this sawing right. motion. Well, you can start losing gums as a result of mm -hmm. sawing too hard. You get recession. Mm -hmm. And so we want more of a little bit of a round, circular type motion. Okay. At least when you're working with a regular toothbrush. Because now they have the sonic toothbrushes, which we highly recommend. And with those, you let it do the work. So mm -hmm. you have to set it in the gum line, let it kind of do its thing, and then move to another spot, let it do its thing. But if you're working with a regular toothbrush, you don't want to be sawing. sawing the only place you saw is right up on the tops. Oh, That's the okay. only place you should be sawing away. On the sides, if you do that, you can actually scar the tooth, can't you? You can actually see the grooves. Mm -hmm. It can start forming grooves. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Right. So that's one thing, obviously. Um, the next thing that is probably the most obvious is flossing. You need to brush and floss. And, you know, I tell people, you know, we're here to help you. We're, we're here to give you the arm, armamentarium that you need right. to be able to do this at home and keep your bacteria levels under control in between the cleaning appointments, okay. which as we were talking about are like every three to four months if you have periodontal disease. Okay. Floss first, then brush? Flo no, brush first. Then floss. Then floss. All right. Okay. So well, I'll show you on this little model here that you're holding. When, when I tell people to floss, you want about 18 inches. You don't want just a tiny little amount. And you wrap that around your fingers and you place it between the teeth and you wrap it and you go up and down kind of in a C motion on each side. And you want to go to the very back tooth as well. Wow. Stay with us. We're learning how to properly floss here on Medical Montana. I'm back at Sunset Dental visiting with Dr. Van Dyke more about periodontal disease, uh, which as it turns out can be very dangerous if left untreated. Mm -hmm. uh, this bacteria that can grow in our mouth can spread elsewhere to the body. Are there examples of this? There are. Um, they've actually done studies where they have found the same bacteria from the mouth embedded in the walls of the heart wow. of, of people who've had heart attacks and, and people who've literally died. So that tells us that it can translate to other areas in the body. And the inflammation that can be caused in the bloodstream mm -hmm. from bacteria in the mouth when it's out of control. Mm -hmm. And that's a really a huge factor because when you have a lot of inflammation in a blood vessel, it causes the inside of the blood vessel to become rough, mm -hmm. if you will. And therefore, it sets you up to possibly attract the plaques that clog the arteries mm -hmm. easier. So you don't want inflammation in the blood, in the vessels like that. It's, right. It can be very dangerous over time. It could cause a heart attack. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Just by, you know, making it easier. You know, I, I think it's good for the audience to hear that, that mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes we let, we're not in terrible pain, we let mm -hmm. things go mm -hmm. on and on and prolong. Mm -hmm. And uh, not a good idea in this case. No, and, and you know, another thing I should bring up is diabetes. Um, people who have diabetes, if your mouth is out of control, it can make it really hard to control your blood sugar. And vice versa, we have people show up who, one of those things where, why isn't our treatment working? What's going on? And we've found people who are diabetic who don't know they're diabetic, and that's why that's contributing too to the mouth being out of control. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's so many connections that um, tell us a lot. I mean, we've talked about sleep apnea in the past, mm -hmm. um, scalloping of the tongue. When I look in someone's mouth, if their tongue is scalloped, they've done studies now that show that that's 70% predictive right. that you're sleep apnea. Right. So it's amazing what you find that tells you about someone's health. So important. Folks, for all your oral health needs, you can see Dr. Van Dyke here at Sunset Dental. You're watching Medical Montana. Here on Medical Montana today, I'm talking with Dr. Van Dyke, and she has been fixing periodontal disease. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a number of ways to do it. We talked about these tools, mm -hmm. but there's other ways that you can help. Yeah, we had the, we talked about the sonic type scaler, mm -hmm. which is nice. Um, can be a little easier than these mm -hmm. if you're numb. All of it, you're numb. Right. Um, the other instrument we have here is back to the laser. Wow. We talked about this in, in previous shows. Great instrument. And this is just another use for this laser. Um, if you look closely at the tip, there's a little, little tip sticking out of there. Right. And that little tip, if you slip that between the tooth and the gum, right down in that sulcus where we were probing. Right. You now put that down in the sulcus, and you, it's a real low level, and you go around that sulcus after you've done the, the, the root scaling mm -hmm. with either the sonic or the regular instruments. Then you put this down in the socket, in the, in the sulcus, excuse me, huh. which is between the tooth and the tissue. And you go around it, and what that's doing is that is the only way you could literally kill the bacteria down in that sulcus wow. that day. Okay. So what we find is our patients heal up faster because we've not only removed the calculus that's causing it, but now we can do one more thing and we can remove the bacteria or at least bring that level down way down from where it was. And it helps the patient basically kind of get a kickstart okay. on it getting healthier. So it so. seems like the, the laser really is the, is the most effective treatment. It's great. You know, I... I really believe in it because our patients do very well with it. Mm -hmm. um, it's an awesome tool. And what, kind of a, more of a long-term fix in some ways. It is. And, you know, the th other thing you have to realize, if you have periodontal disease, you're going to come in every three to four months. Remember how we talked about, I told my patients, it's like a cancer. It will come back. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep treating the sulcus. Even though you don't have to go to the deep scaling anymore, mm -hmm. you have to keep cleaning it out and using this and keep those bacterial numbers down. Yet another great use for the laser. I'm visiting with Dr. Van Dyke. This is Medical Montana. Perfect.